Hey, what's up everybody? Caleb here from the Plastic Underground and the Nerd Holes. Um, this is a thing that I have been worried about happening for a while, and uh, we've been lucky up to this point, but um, I just was editing our first episode of the... the um, the nerd holes covering the first half of the Mandalorian. Uh, we recorded it a while ago, Will and I, and um, the file was corrupted somewhere along transfer, and I only have like the first twenty minutes of the episode. So, um, I'm gonna post it. Um, Will kind of gives his thoughts in the beginning, early on, about kind of what he feels about the episode the first half the first four episodes and um hopefully the second half of season one is good and i can get that out so sorry um i know it's kind of a bummer i'm kind of bummed by it too but um stay tuned for the rest of this episode like i said will kind of covers his thoughts and feelings about the first half and then i'll roll out the second half a little bit sooner and we just just recently talked about first part of season two. So I got stuff in the works for the nerd holes. And we're also going to be doing some other fun stuff covering the Mission Impossible movies. So stay tuned for that. Sorry this happened. Uh, it sucks. But as Thanos would say, it was inevitable. Why? Wow, this is uh, you must be quite excited for the Mandalorian. <laughs> I'm uh, chuffed to bits, as they say, on the other side of the pond. <laughs> I believe over on the other side of the pond, they say Mandalorian. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Nerd Holes. We are continuing on our live action Star Wars watch. So tonight, I feel it's about time we are digging into the Mandalorian. So tonight we are covering the first four episodes of season one of the Mandalorian. So this is Will's first time watching the Mandalorian. And uh, let's ask you quickly, what? Uh, how, are, how are you feeling? How are you feeling about the first four episodes? I feel pretty good about 90% of it. Yeah. Good. I feel really good about it. Well, then we can continue to be friends. So that's... Yes. That's good. Yes. Um, I have watched the first season of this quite a few times. This is probably like my fourth, fifth time watching it. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, yeah, and I have not watched it in a, in a while. So going back and watching this, it like, again, reminded me. Um, I mean, you can remember when this, this came out, this was like Disney Plus's like big, like new yeah. dive, like Star Wars show. And we had just come off of like the last Skywalker or whatever the crap that was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was not in like a big Star Wars fan boy after that movie came out. It was, you know, obviously like originals and that stuff I still loved. And uh um yeah, just wasn't like big on Star Wars. And so the show kind of came out when Disney Plus launched. I think I watched it like the day of. And it just like it grabbed me. It like totally hooked me. I mean, it's it takes place in a cool time in in history, like Star Wars history. Yep. The Empire is gone. The Rebel Alliance is active. Um, it's not the Rebel Alliance anymore. They're like the the Rebel something. But um. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's just a cool time period. And then the way that first episode ends, you're like. Okay, I'm very interested in what they're doing. Yeah. 
So, you know, and the other thing, too, is like this is it kind of goes back to classic Star Wars, what Star Wars sh should be, you know, what George Lucas loved. He loved samurais and westerns. And sure. if this is not a samurai western space odyssey, I don't know what is. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. It's the classic story of the Ronin samurai warrior who saves a child and then has to like raise the child. Mm -hmm. It's that kind of story arc, you know? Yeah. I think it was like last shonen or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll 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 talk about these by episode here, but um this was Basically created by Dave Filoni and John Favreau. Yeah, but Dave Filoni had been working on like the Clone Wars and the animated stuff for a long time, so he kind of brings over his love of that into this show. Mm -hmm. um, the Mandalorians were a big part of that. I know you haven't you haven't seen all of uh, Clone Wars and stuff, but. I, mean, I haven't seen the last season. Yeah. So you remember like all the Mandalorian stuff, the, you know, yeah. Mando stuff. So it's cool that he brought all that stuff in to this. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This was kind of the, the time period here where like Dave Filoni and John Favreau, like together, you had like hope for Star Wars and stuff moving mm -hmm. forward. You were like super excited about it. Yeah. And they're still doing pretty great stuff. I think I think Dave Filoni just took over as like executive producer of all Star Wars stuff mm. at Disney. I okay. think he's like top like top guy now. Oh, okay. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, so this show stars uh Pedro Pascal. Uh Carl Weathers, which is said he just he just passed away not that long ago. I know. <laughs> but he's really great in this. So he is. It's kind of it's it's pretty cool. Uh the other character we get to see is uh uh Gina Carino. She plays yeah. Dragon. She's really good. Yeah. And and like Werner Herzog, right? Werner Herzog is excellent. Yes. And Nick Quill voices uh The uh, bug nut. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. So it was played by a little short um, woman in full costume <laughs> with okay. animated uh, mouth. Yeah. And it's Nick Nolte that voices him. Wow. Nick yeah. Nolte. Wow. It was pretty cool. I have spoken. I have spoken. <laughs> yeah, he's really great. Also, uh, Emily Swallow is the armorer. Okay, and uh, John Favreau plays that heavy, like is he really? Yeah, the big Mando <laughs> guy, the big blue Mando that's guy. Funny. Yeah, yeah, the guy who comes in the room and kind of butts heads with him. Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's John Favreau. So that's cool. He's he gets to that's be really it. funny too. Yeah, makes sense though. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, so let's do this. So let's do, let's go right from the beginning here. So season one, episode one, The Mandalorian. What, uh, why don't you just, uh, some stuff you like about this episode that stood out to you. So the really funny thing is, um, when this came out in 2019, almost five years ago. Jeez, yeah, that does, that sounds crazy to even say that. Right. Like in my brain, 2019 is like, oh, it's not that long ago. It's like pre a lot of things. It's like pre pandemic, pre. Yeah, it's like just before the pandemic started, really. Yeah. So, um, I was getting all hyped up for The Last Jedi. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Or was it? No, it was uh, Rise of Skywalker, right? Yeah, it was Rise of Skywalker. One of those, yeah. And Rise of Skywalker was coming out, and I Last Jedi had like completely tanked me on Star Wars. Yeah, and this came out, and I was just like, oh. "Yeah, more Star Wars." Yeah, <laughs> and so I sat down with Adri, and we watched the first episode. 
told it like we watched it from start to finish. Mm. And I remember when it ended, we were like, oh, that's in- it's interesting. But like, there was never a point where we were like, Ugh. it was just like, oh, cool. And then we just ne- we literally never watched a single episode again. Yeah. You guys do that. Pretty a lot. Often. <laughs> yeah. And. Uh, so the really nice thing about it was going into this into this. You know, I'm a little spoiled. I, you know, the internet exists, so it's a yeah. five year old show. So some stuff I know, I know things happen, mm-hmm. but it's like I don't understand the context behind yeah. it. And how do we get there? Yeah. And how do we get there? So all I remembered from watching the first episode was obviously the opening because we had done that for the Taskmaster. Thing. Oh, yeah. I remembered <laughs> which I'll never see. No, I'll never see. I remember him going to the the like cantina thing yeah and the blue guy i kind of remember brian mm. posein as the speeder guy oh it's, yeah i kind of remember him i remember the ugnot guy like this much and then i remembered him at the end with the um with the assassin droid Is ig yeah ig yeah, yeah. i kind of remember some of that and that was it so i was like cool i i can't you know, like it's okay. I'll watch this first episode, and then as I was watching, I was like, I don't remember like half of this stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, like I didn't realize when he gets that guy in the doorway, like he cuts in half in the door. I was oh like, yeah, you know, um, I forgot Carl Weathers was even in this episode. Yeah, um, the whole purpose of. Of the Ugnat, like why he was there and like what he was doing. And mm. and the other thing that really blew me away too was the armorer. I had oh, seen yeah. pictures of her yeah. in some of something else. And it probably honestly was probably the scene where he comes in with the first like ingot thing. Oh yeah. Slab or whatever. Best car. Yeah. And I thought this isn't in the first episode. I was like, I thought yeah, this they... was like they set up a episode. lot. They set up a yeah. lot in the first episode. It was crazy. It was it was a lot to take in. And uh yeah, so I don't know. I the first episode ended and I was like, why does he like the kid? Why does he yeah. like the child? Why doesn't he just take care of business kind of thing? Because he's very you know, he show as they show in that leading up to that thing, he's very like one track minded. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, when this first came out, you, you don't have the five years of context that like, yeah, it's him and the child, sure. <laughs> like they're just on adventures together. It's like, right, right, this right. First right. episode, it's like, okay, so it's just another job, but obviously they're, you know, he, he, he right. shoots the IG 11 unit cause he was supposed to assassinate the, the child. Right. So there's already kind of something there, you know? Yeah. It was really, it was really interesting and I was trying to like, you know, now I'm invested in like how it's going to carry yeah. forward. How do you feel about his armor set in the first episode? Um, it's I was really surprised because I thought when you made or were in the process of making the Mandalorian armor. Yeah. I thought because also Disney Plus spoils it. They show like the, the, the Beskar like all over. Him. Yeah. Yeah. So when he starts, and I was like, it kind of reminded me of like a droid, not droid, a Clone Wars armor. Mm. Just yeah. very like same. Yeah. And um, I didn't really pick up on it that like it was not the right armor set when he first gives the slab. Right. And right. The shiny pauldron. And I was like, yeah. oh, and then I was like, well, well, yeah, wait a minute. Isn't all of him <laughs> shiny? And then <laughs> like, then the, you know, the show yeah. goes on. But so it's like he, he, invest all his Beskar into his helmet because that's the most yeah. important thing, you know? Yeah. And then yeah. After, so after this first episode, he does that job. He gets that one Beskar ingot and he gets a shoulder pauldron upgrade. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. I kind of like the mismatch in the first episode, his like old style stuff. that's kind of like worn and beat up and yeah, keeps upgrading pieces of it as he goes. It's a pretty cool exactly. concept. Makes makes total sense too. Yeah. I believe one of his sh- shoulder pauldrons is a sh- uh, from a shore trooper captain. Oh, okay. It's that tan 
stormtrooper shoulder like with it. the blue stripe for like the captain. Yeah. And his his shin guards are uh his well the one shin guard complete like shin guard thing is shore trooper armor. It's like the Okay. It's like the part that wraps around your leg and calf and it's got like the T. It's shore trooper and it's it's pretty cool that they like pulled all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different things. It and totally even, gave me pre uh pre new hope vibes. Yeah. His armor set. Yeah. So his his bla his rifle, this oh his yeah pulse rifle, yeah, is based on Boba Fett's rifle from the holiday special, the animated. Oh okay okay yeah, 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 yeah. it's got the big forks the big yeah on yeah. the end of it. It's a really it's a really sweet like uh, he does a lot with it. So and this is where you see why Darth Vader said no disintegrations. Because this is like it's pretty I brutal. It. I it's it. pretty brutal. Yeah, you know, the disintegration rifle. That's the funny. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't think about that. That's true. It's pretty. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty instant. It's pretty overpowered uh, yeah. for a bounty hunter. Yeah, and also the IG is cool. We've seen the IG yeah. throughout history, but like, I think in, um, not New Hope, but uh, Return of the Emperor. We see the IG assassin droid uh, bounty hunter that Darth Vader sends out with like Boba Fett and everybody. Okay. Okay. It's not the same one, but it's they're yeah, continuing yeah. on saying like, yeah, they were protocol for for being bounty hunters. So like, yeah. here's another one. So that is super cool. So the interesting thing is too is his his ship. They mm. say it's pre Empire. Yep, the Razor Crest. Yes, it's almost like a, dr uh, like clone a drop ship. trooper dropship type thing. Yeah, that's what I thought too. It's super cool, right? It's super like yeah. fitting for a Mandalorian, like bounty hunter, to have this. He's got like on the go carbonation chamber in. Yeah, there. that was it's that cool, was right? Really crazy because I was like, oh, but then yeah. it makes you think that the writing was that basically Boba Fett puts it out there that like. Mm. This That's... way of collecting bounties is like successful because yeah. in Empire Strikes Back, when Vader uh, is testing it on Han Solo to take Luke to the Empire or Emperor, um, Boba Fett doesn't want it. He's like, "Don't do this." Yeah. Like, what if he doesn't survive? And he's like, "Who cares?" But Vader's like, "Who cares? I don't. I'll give. I'll give you the money for it. I don't <laughs> care yeah. about whether or not Han Solo lives." Yeah. So you must think that, you know, because Boba Fett brings him to Jabba, that Boba Fett, it must enter, like, the bounty hunter network that, mm. like, oh, putting these people in carbon, like, is a successful way of transporting yeah. them. And they can dethaw. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that was crazy. Mm -hmm. That was very reminiscent of Obi-Wan, the series. I know this came out before it, but when, is it him? I think it's him or maybe it's the woman they go into like that underground and there's the tubes full of people oh wow yeah yeah i remember exactly it was like in the citadel or something right it like, was it was at the um yeah at the base there vader's yeah. base type thing it's like the inquisitor's base the inquisitor's base yeah so yeah it reminded me a lot of that and i was just like it actually was a lot i i it was more cool and more interesting than I anticipated it being. Yeah. Well, I like too, like before that, you can see that he opens up that cabinet and it was yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like all his like weaponry. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm molting. It's so I'm... gross. <laughs> yeah. But before that, you get to see that giant like ice. Oh, yeah. Leviathan like grab the ship and he comes out and he's almost like, like a shock thing on it yeah it was almost like a squid walrus kind of thing yeah it was kind of like a walrus thing yeah yeah it was cool. so that's, that's pretty cool but yeah you see right in the beginning he's not like you don't you know, he's not one to be messed with he he messes up those dudes pretty quick in the bar no yeah that was very <laughs> fast don't they remind you of the guys from the canteen that uh most icely like, oh yeah. my friend doesn't like you <laughs> yes yes <laughs> He like walks in the door and they like 
He's like, you spilled my drink. <laughs> like, no, I don't think so. No. Yeah, pretty good. The um, now we you know we go in we see the like rusted or are they dirty like stormtroopers? They're just like super old and dirty. Yeah. Okay. So the question I had for you, and if they're gonna explain it, like as the show goes on, then don't worry about it. Yeah. But I am a tiny bit confused on how the tracking fobs work. Mm. I get like he says that he only has the individual's age and that's a part of like the code or something. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't understand how the rest of it works. Like if there's not a thing on them, because you would think the Mandalorian would just take that off of the child. That is true. That is true. Yeah, I don't I don't know. And I don't think they really ever go into explaining it. I Okay. I assume maybe it has something to do with like DNA. Like it's like a Okay. Like a I don't know, almost like a blood test that you put on the chip that tracks that. I don't mm-hmm. I don't know. It just was like, okay, they have his age, and I was like, okay. And then the show went yeah. on and okay, great, whatever. And then yeah, when you, you know, just take it off. Episodes happen, and then all of a sudden, well, it ends, right? And a, this episode four ends with a certain thing. And I was like, well, how? How? Yeah. So. Okay. That's a good question. That's a really good question. I don't I don't remember. I don't think they. Address it. I don't think they do. Um. Yeah, I assume it's like blood or DNA based. It's, it's fine. Yeah. I mean, it's not like a breaking thing. It's just. I was interested. To the tracking that. fobs are unique to this show, I believe. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think so. The thing that I was interested in about the tracking fob is that, like, you would know that a bounty hunter is tracking you because you would hear that thing beeping. Yes. From, like, behind you. So yes. you would know, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of stuff in the show that make noise that shouldn't make noise. I I know this. <laughs> like the yeah. so the tracking fob for one makes noise, and then his his like puck, grenade pucks that he puts on the walls. Yeah, they like flash, and they go. Oh yes. Beep 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 beep. <laughs> and it's like, I don't, you would you want somebody to know that you stuck that on the wall? <laughs> be like, oh, it's right here. Oh, I don't want that on there. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, that shouldn't be on this main support beam. <laughs> Whew, yeah. that was close. <laughs> but it's cool to see like remnants of the Empire like hiding away, though, isn't it? Like, oh, yeah. Well, the, he, it was a huge thing that his slab piece and then later the cash was like, mm. well, that's all. It's like, like dirty money. Yeah. It's all like, you know, nobody likes it kind of thing. Yeah, it's because uh, of the purge of Mandalore, yeah. where they the Empire like just destroyed all of Mandalore. Yeah, and there's like a super simple line, and I think it's the first episode that they basically. I think Carl Weathers says it. It's like they basically explain that, you know, like yeah, they kill like you know we they don't say it, but like it infers that like yeah, the Emperor and Darth Vader and the second Death Star is all blown up. It's all good, but they're still like warlords and yeah. mercenaries and like yeah you know other other people who are still in control of things that aren't the empire essentially and you're like oh yeah that would be true like if Jabba was alive like just because Vader and the Emperor are dead doesn't mean that like he doesn't still have power in his area. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Which is is kind of actually more dangerous that it's like all of these like top guys from the Empire. True. All the ones that are actually dangerous not yeah, true. You know, these stormtroopers are not dangerous. Like, at all. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so then he lands on that planet. He meets uh, New- Noel. No- oh, yeah. Noel, or whatever his name is. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember. He has to learn how to ride that blurg. The blurg, yeah. Yeah, they're pretty awful. <laughs> Kind of like reminds me of like Super Mario Goombas. He did. They still look better than those Goombas. <laughs> oh, from the nineties. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. 
I like I thought that was funny that he was like, Oh, you can only you can only travel on these. And then like they have these tiny little legs that can't jump over these yeah, the basses kind of and stuff. It's like confused about it too, but it's all um, right. Maybe just because it's super hot on that planet. I don't know. I have spoken. I have spoken. <laughs> yeah, he's great. So we're introduced <laughs> to two great lines in this episode, like immediately. Oh. It's, this is the way, and I have yeah. spoken. Yeah. 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 I told, I see. So I, I obviously knew about this is the way. It's happening yeah. everywhere on the internet. Mm-hmm. But I didn't realize that it was like, I didn't one realize it was tied to specifically Mandalorians, and two, yeah. I didn't realize that it was like a. I don't say a mantra, but like, it's kind of like the what's the other thing there, um, that you you've said to me before from Battlestar. Oh man, I don't know. It could be anything. <laughs> it's like, uh, and so it. And so it is, or oh, oh yeah. What is it? Oh, so um, say it is, or something like that, right? So say we all. Yes, right. It was. It's a lot like that. It's one of those things that you you say, and then everybody repeats it because yes. it's like a a unifying correct s- slogan or not slogan, but like a. I know. Yeah. The, I know what you're trying to say. I can't think of the word for it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. And that's, I didn't realize that's what it was for. Like, I, I thought it was just more like the, like this specific Mandalorian, like saying something, like, you know, well, this is the way, whatever. Yeah. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Nerd Holes. We are continuing on with our Star Trek. Wow. I'm so used to saying Star Trek because of you. You <laughs> ruined this for me. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. Yes. Who is this little green dude peeking out with us? So why? Who's under that shiny helmet with secrets that he hides? Why does he hate robots in this galaxy so wild? Downy Hunter turned into a dad, now softened by this child. Mandalorian on a mission. Got a heart filled with ambition. Little green friend by his side. In the stars they do confide. From deserts to icy lands, they travel hand in hand. Enemies they won't withstand Together they take a stand For Caleb and Will For every episode 